Good morning and welcome to Veritiv's webcast dedicated to Avacent ACS console server for data center and micro data center. Our today's speaker is Krzysztof Krawczyk, IT Solutions Sales Manager for Eastern Europe region. Feel free to download product materials shared by us. You may ask also questions related to products and technical issues through Q&A widget. Most of product questions asked by the participant will be answered after the presentation. Don't forget to follow Vertivco account on LinkedIn. Thank you for the attention. Hello everybody, it's Chris here. And today I will do a webcast about our Vertiv Avocent ACS console server, which can be used in enterprise data center and also in micro data center on the edge. And before I will deep dive, dive into uh, details about console server. I will do small introduction about our IT management portfolio, what we can provide to our customers, to our partners. In the data center, we have two types of assets. One is like Cisco network switch, so network equipment, uh, and that communication with those devices are usually text-based. The other type of asset in data center is uh, Windows servers with which we communicate using graphical interface. For those assets in data centers, we have solutions which provide a communication, a remote access, and ACS, advanced console server is one of those. We also have other solutions like UMG. This is Universal Management Gateway. This provides a graphical access to servers. And we have also KVM switches just focused on servers. We also have PDUs and we have UPSs. Also we have racks which binds everything together. And today we will focus on one of those, advanced console server, which will allow us to access a Cisco switch, firewall, Linux server, Unix server, and other equipment which have a serial port which we can connect to. So, let's start from the beginning. What is console server? Some of you might not know. So this is a device which we put in a rack. It's a 1U device, so not big one. We, we, those devices usually have number of ports, 2, 4, maybe 48 as well. And we connect all of those ports to devices in rack, like devices I mentioned, Cisco switch, router, firewall, maybe even some server. So, like, uh, we can also connect PDUs, we can connect also air conditioning units, and then we connect to our ACS using HTTPS or SSH just to connect those devices. So we provide a remote access to equipment, to IT equipment, which is in the rack. We are using a TCP IP connection for that communication. And let's examine one scenario in such a data center when we can use a console server. Let's imagine that we have some critical device in our data center which provides our website, our corporate website. And a user is notifying us that something is wrong, that it's not working. So the technical support guy, probably a network administrator or system administrator, is contacted, is called and notified about that issue. What he is doing first, he is trying to connect to that equipment. 
and he is using also TCP IP network. So he's trying to access that particular device remotely to investigate, to find out what is wrong. What will happen if he is not able to contact that device? He has to go to that device. Depending where this device is, it can take 30 minutes or even four hours because this could be in another city or maybe in another country. So that is why that is very important to have a remote access. Otherwise, we'll have to travel. Even if we are close to that device, Still, we need to go through some control access. We need to find that solution in data center. We have 20, 30, 40 racks in the data center. We need to locate that particular device. It will take some time as well. Then we connect to that device physically and we are diagnosing what's wrong with that device, trying to find what was the cause of that failure. And finally, we are trying to figure it out how we can fix it. It will again take some time. Most of those things we can do remotely. 80% of such issues can be handled remotely. Of course, there might be some 20% of those which will require our physical presence in the data center, but 80% is still high. So, in general, let's assume it's 90 minutes of downtime. 90 minutes for a transaction server, for e-auction, or for any shop which we have uh, from e-commerce. It's just a lot of lost revenue. That's why if we can find an alternative solution to fix that issue quicker, that's very, very important. And we can do this if we will have a console server in that data center. It will be located in the same rack and it will be connected to that equipment which might might not work correctly. So engineer, instead of connecting directly to the device, is using our ACS to connect to that device. And he can quickly find out what was happening before it failed. It might be that somebody was applying a firmware upgrade and we will know what to do because we can start remotely a recovery procedure just to upload a proper firmware instead of the one which was probably not the right one. So we will save time and we can quickly recover our service. And let's focus a little bit on our solution because what I described is general for console servers. Our console server is called ACS. It's Advanced Console Server. We are a market leader in that segment. We have very trusted solutions. Our customers are using those for 10 years or even more. We have cooperation with cellular experts, which means that we can add as cellular support, so we can access our solutions using mobile network. At the end, at the end of this presentation, I will show you our demo environment, uh, how I'm using a mobile network to access our ACS console server and how I can access those devices quickly. Instead of traveling somewhere like on other, uh, other side of the capital, I can just access it very quickly. We have two solutions at this moment. One is called ACS 8000. It's an enterprise product, which means it is designed for data center, big data center, because he can have 
as much as 48 ports. So we can connect 48 devices. We have dual Ethernet port, which means we can have a network redundancy. We have dual fiber ports, which will allow us to connect for longer distances. We have dual power supplies, because again, power redundancy. And we can also have integrated analog modem. So we will have alternative access to that console server if production network is not working correctly. So independently, we can access it. Of course, I will tell you later that we can access it using also mobile cellular connection. That device can be also used in edge applications because it has eight USB ports, it has sensors ports, it can have a support for industrial serial protocols, RS485 and RS422. So I will explain this a little bit later. Second solution which we have is ACS 800. It's smaller one, so compact design. It has less ports because two, four, or eight serial ports. It has still dual Ethernet ports and it still provides an integrated analog modem. It still have some USB ports, less than the previous one because only four, but there are still, it's still, I think it's still enough. And it provides again ports for sensors, ports for digital sensors as well, and some uh, digital outputs. Digital outputs allow us to provide some sound or visual effects based on notification we receive from our equipment. If there is some failure, like for example, there is a leak detection in place, and we detect there is some toxic fluid in our environment, we can provide some alarms and then provide some lights and sounds which will warn us about that. The differences between those two solutions are marked on that slide. Basically, it's a port count. So the smaller one, 800, have just smaller number of ports. The bigger one, ACS 8000, have up to 40 eight ports. We also don't have a fiber ports in the smaller one, but instead we have digital outputs. So for edge applications, we can provide digital outputs. Let's dip down into that particular sensors. So we, what kind of sensors can we connect? We can connect temperature sensors. We can connect humidity sensors, as well as door, door access sensors. So we can detect if somebody is opening a rack. Maybe it is not allowed to open a rack in that time. We can connect, uh, we can also differentiate, uh, uh, we can also detect some pressure, we can detect some leaks, and we can detect some uh, gas, for example. So different type of sensors. USB ports, which we have in our solutions, can be used also for serial connectivity. Some of network vendors like Cisco or Juniper are already using a console port in form of USB port. So instead of RG45 just to access a console server, they provide a USB port. So that is why we can utilize those USB ports for serial connectivity as well. So if we are smart, we can actually use four ports uh, which are provided by uh, RG45 and four ports which are provided by USB. So in four port device can access up to eight devices actually. Because we can use a dongle, dongle from USB to serial. 
So in total, we can access even more devices that it was designed. And we provide a support for industrial serial protocols. So instead of uh, just RS-232, we provide an access to devices which are using another protocols, the long distances protocols, RS-422 and RS-485. And I mentioned in the previous slides that we can access our devices using a cellular connection. This would be used using an independent external router. LTE 4G connectivity. And we are allowing our customers to utilize those in such scenario that it will fail over to those devices if production network is not working. So if for some reason our production network is down, we can still access our device using an external router. And how it works, we just put a SIM card into it. We will assign to that SIM a public IP address. It could be a static or dynamic address. And then we will access our device. I will show it later during a demo live session. We are not the only one on that segment of the market. There is a competition. And I will try to explain a little bit about what we are facing on that market. Our main competitors are OpenGear, Lantronics, and Rariton. OpenGear is also strong in small solution market. So ACM 7000 is a solution which is actually a very big competition for our ACS 800. The biggest, uh, the biggest challenge we have is when customer is requiring an embedded internal cellular support. We provide an external, but in the future we will also add internal cellular connection. Let's review those competitors. OpenGear instead of uh, ACS 800. Definitely our solution is better from the performance point of view. We have a better processor, more memory, more storage. We provide a support for those industrial protocols and we provide access to sensors. Since we as Vertif are a data center company, that's very important because in those data centers, we can use those sensors to measure temperature and to measure humidity and other measurements. I will show it later during my live session. If we compare the bigger solution uh, from OpenGear, it's more or less the same. We have uh, support for serial protocols, uh, for industrial protocols. We have, again, environmental sensors and we provide also a better performance. Lantronics, this is a very interesting solution because it provides a modularity. So we can start from eight ports and extend, scale the uh, console server up to 48. But again, our solution provides something which the Lantronic is not able to do. So we can detect some uh, temperatures, we can extend our connection over long distances, and our performance is definitely the best on the market. And lastly, Raritan, also very important player on that market. Again, similar, similar uh, differences. Again, protocol support, environmental sensor port, better memory from what we can tell. So what are the, our key differentiators? 
definitely performance. So our ACS 8000 series was introduced in December last year. So it's a very new solution. As only provider, we can provide multi-protocol serial ports, which will allow us to access a standard serial connection or industrial serial connection. We can also use a USB port for serial connectivity. We are the only one which provides support for sensors. So if we want to place and console server in data center, definitely we want to know what is the temperature close to our IT equipment. We also provide support for UPS and PDU. Again, this is what we actually provide. We provide UPSs, we provide PDUs. So, we of course provide support for those. We use HTML5 Viewer. So, we start to uh, use only HTML5 in our solutions. So, we don't use any more Java or Flash. Uh, so, legacy technologies which no longer are accepted by many customers. As only provider, we are able to do one-time password. What does it mean? It means that just for brief session with an IT equipment, we can create a password which will be utilized only for that session. So administrator can grant access for a user just for one session and it's just in place, just standard way how we do it. We also have API, so programming, pro programming interface, so we can integrate with other technologies, so we can get information from our solutions to maybe some centralized way, some centralized software. And when, where can we use our ACS? the application of our console servers. Let's look at some example of branch of the bank, so from financial institution. Usually in such branches, there is a rack uh, somewhere, and in that rack is probably some server, there's probably some router, and maybe some UPS, maybe some PDU. We can place there also our ACS 800, so our small solution, just to access that equipment and provide a remote access using serial connection, so independent from the network connection. If there will be some alarm, some critical uh, threshold was reached, we can notify administrator of those devices, that is something is happening. If standard network is down, we can use a cellular network. So we can use our Cradle Point solution to access our console server. This is, this is a typical application of our solutions. We access servers, routers, maybe also UPS, maybe PDU, and some sensors like here a door sensor. Another application in a shop. So for retail environment, usually in the back of that shop, there is also some environment for IT infrastructure. So there are some also IT equipment. So we can use it uh, the same way I described earlier, but also we can connect some sensors, like to measure temperature, humidity, maybe to detect smoke from the failed uh, power supply. We can detect a motion. So somebody entered that, uh, that uh, server room, that small server room. We can connect USB camera to make sure that we will get a face of that person who is entering that, uh, that, that room. We can also have some sensor for gas. So uh, in, that, in that application, we can definitely uh, have a better insight what's going on in that room. In data center, in enterprise data center, usually we have a good control of the environment. We have a cooling equipment uh, and which can 
allow us to have controlled temperature. With edge applications, with small server room, definitely it's not the case. It's not always possible to have a best uh, temperature in that environment. So we need to measure it and be notified if it is increasing too much or decreasing too much. What is important maybe to mention now is that our ACS 800 is working with very uh, big range of temperatures. So it starts from zero degrees of Celsius up to 70 degrees of Celsius. So it means it will can work with harsh environments. Another example for industrial commercial factory. So again, in that factory, we can have some server, can have some can have some router. We can also have some manufacturing equipment, which is not connected using, let's say, IT serial protocol, but it's connected using industrial uh, serial protocol. So using, for example, ERAS 485. We can connect to uh, some cooling equipment. We can, as I mentioned uh, earlier, provide some lights. So some warning about a detection, maybe leak detection of some water, maybe some toxic liquid. And of course, detection about temperature who is rising maybe too quickly. Again, another application of our solution. When we go to some IT vendors like Cisco or HP, they provide now some converged or hyper-converged solutions. So typically, it is that it is a box which provides a computing, storage, and networking in one box. But again, sometimes it might not work as expected, and we can add to the track our console server, which will be a backup session, which will provide alternative access to that equipment and solve potential issues if they will happen. And last thing, uh, I mentioned that we have two series, two solutions, ACS 8000 and 800. We will introduce next year a solution called ACS 9000. And today I will do just a quick sneak peek about that solution. So we provide you some insight what it will be. And this will be a serial console server as expected, but based not on ARM architecture, but on Intel architecture. It will be preloaded with Ubuntu Linux. So actually, we will not use our proprietary technology, but we will provide you a freedom of using whatever you want on that box. You can uninstall the Ubuntu Linux, and you can, for example, install your favorite Linux distribution. It could be a Red Hat, it could be a SUSE, it could be CentOS, or any other. It will have the same architecture as ACS 8000. So again, up to 48 serial ports. It will have also analog modem support, two gigabit network, and copper or fiber. It will also have USB ports as ACS 8000. The main difference, the main difference for this solution, it is a solution for customers who seek a possibility to be more agile with what they have on those console servers. As a vendor, we follow some path for actual upgrades and updates on our firmware. So we do some quality and assurance tests. It takes some time to deliver new functionalities. With ACS 9000, a customer can actually do it on their own. If they have some programming resources, they can design their own interface 
for that console server can add some functionalities which maybe we will not add in uh, in a close future. So that is why we provide some programming environment, some development environment on that box and with some source code. So you can modify that and just extend to your uh, expectations. So ACS 9000 will be an open box solution with some drivers provided to access our hardware. It will be the same technology as ACS 8000, but there will be no onboard web interface. There will be no DSView support on that box. But we will allow our customers to access any, uh, to install any Linux operating system on that uh, device. Actually, uh, this solution was designed for one of our customers. He actually expected us to provide something like that. So it was designed for Google, for our customer who is using uh, our console servers for a very long time. But Google is a software company, so they have a lot of internal resources and they can assign some people just to develop an operating system just for their own console servers. They don't design hardware, so they asked us to design hardware. We're an expert in console servers. And we did that, and since it's working, we also are planning to allow other customers to use the same approach, to have a possibility to access uh, our console servers even from the operating system uh, point of view and design their own operating system or use existing one or just extend it as you want. And at the end of that presentation today, I want to do some demo, just not only theoretically explain everything, but show something. And I created some small environment. And I have a Cradle Point router with SIM card with public IP address. This will be uh, uh, also available to you. If you want to access it later, go ahead. Uh, we can share some information, or if you just watch closely, you can just use that IP address I'm using. Why have ACS 800 console server? That server uh, is connected to two devices. One is Ubuntu. It's actually ACS 9000 with Ubuntu. And another one is our PDU, MPH2. That PDU provides power to that ACS 9000 and also provides power to my cradle point to my router. So we will first connect to cradle point. I will show you how it's configured. Then we will connect to console server and I will show you what is there. There should be two devices. Let me now share my screen with you. You should see it soon. I'm just sharing this. And I'm using an IP address of 188.147.0.0. And I'm connecting on port 8080 to access actually my Cradle Point. This is an administrative portal. I'm logging as admin, as username admin, with password, password Vertif17. And I have access to my router. That router have a modem. 
and that modem have two SIM slots. And one of those slots is occupied with SIM card from T-Mobile. And we arranged a service from that telecommunication company to have a public IP address, and it's assigned to us on that SIM card. That is why I can access that uh, router using uh, internet. And the standard behavior, the standard configuration of that 4G LTE router is if I connect another equipment to it using second LAN port, it is automatically uh, everything, every network traffic coming from uh, cellular network to that uh, device is automatically transferred to that uh, device I connected. So in, uh, maybe the only exception is that port 8080 because that is why I can access, I can still access my administrative portal. But if I will remove a port for uh, to accessing the cradle point, I can just access my ACS 800. And I have a login script, a login screen. I can use uh, my username admin and standard password is Avocent. I'm logging to that device. When I'm logged, I have a list of target devices, of devices I manage. And I have an Ubuntu here. And as you can see, I have a serial viewer. If I click a serial viewer, I will get an access actually to my Ubuntu using a serial connection, not a network connection, what is important. And actually this is ACS 9000. So if I log in with ACS, ACS, I actually get access to my ACS 9000 box with Ubuntu inside. And as you can see, I have some uh, information, some uh, source code for those drivers I mentioned. Now, second uh, port is connected to PDU. And it is connected with the smart way. Uh, so I can see, actually, all the outlets of that PDU. So although I'm using a serial connection, not a network connection using SMTP or something else, I'm accessing that PDU using a serial connection. And I see what is the status of those outlets. One is uh, some of those are powered off. Some of those are, are powered on. And there is also a one which is on, but with a locked. Uh, status, which means that actually I cannot power it off before I will unlock it. This will prevent me from accidentally just powering that router which I'm using to connect to that ACS, because sometimes I can misclick and mark PDU and click off, which will actually power off all outlets. But if that outlet is locked, it will not be powered off. It's just a precaution. So I will not accidentally power off my way of to accessing that, uh, that ACS. But if I click, for example, here and click power on, soon that power will be provided to that outlet and whatever is actually connected there will be powered on. And let's see now what will happen if I will power, I will cycle the power for my, for my console server. So I have Ubuntu here and I have a session, remote session to that Ubuntu. If I do a power cycle, I can see that right now the power is off and 
power it is on and my box is powering on. So I follow standard startup procedure. So if it is a server, I can access a boot uh, lo possibility to boot different operating systems or maybe access setup like BIOS or maybe just top standard startup and go into some recovery option. If what I mentioned, somebody was applying a firmware upgrade and during that firmware upgrade something went wrong. We can restart that box, stop the startup procedure and actually do a recovery procedure to upgrade with different firmware. Maybe do a downgrade actually because the new firmware is not working as expected. If I now choose a Ubuntu, it will be just booting into a login uh, screen again. So if I will just do some keyboard shortcut, I can just stop that booting procedure and maybe go for some recovery options. And again, I can log in here as well. I mentioned also that we are using a sensors. So of course there are some sensors which are inside of that ACS unit, of that console server. So I see what is a CPU temperature. I can see what is motherboard temperature. But what is more important, I can use a sensor port to connect a sensors like temperature sensor, external temperature sensor, external, external humidity sensor. So I can see that in that point there is a 26 degrees, in another point is 27, and in another point is 25, and humidity is at 26%. If I want to create some warnings, some uh, critical messages about what's happening, I can set it up here. If the temperature will go below 20, then I will be notified about that. If some temperature will reach 50, I will be also notified about that. So that is very important to understand what's going on in our server room in, or in our data center. And I'm using an interface for ACS here, but I don't have to. I can use also a putty. So instead of connecting uh, using a web interface, I can use an application just to not use a web interface, just to not connect directly to my uh, device. Let me try to switch now. To another uh, window. Okay. So I have here ACS 800, and if I load that configuration, you will see my IP address. And that IP address is also uh, uh, with some port, it's 7001. If I now connect using SSH, using an SSH client, I will access directly my ACS, ACS 9000. So that is why we don't need to use a web browser because network administrators usually don't want to use additional steps like first access a web interface, then start a serial session. They prefer to, do, to go directly to a target device using their preferred method and usually it is an SSH client from Windows or from Linux. If you like those solutions, we can definitely 
grant you an access to that environment, or we can uh, provide you with your own demo evaluation equipment, which you could test in your own environment or provide it to your customers for evaluation. We are ready for that. Whenever you need it, just contact me uh, and we will arrange this. And now uh, it's time for some questions. Uh, let's check uh, if uh, you had some. Thank you for the all questions you sent. And the first one is, does Verdiv offer a software that ensures access to all devices from single location? Yes, actually I mentioned DSView, but I haven't explained it. DSView is our software which consolidates all devices we actually uh, provide to our partners or customers. So one example, our customer Oracle have 600 devices, 600 ACSs, and it is crash crucial actually to access all of those using a centralized way. And uh, that's the best uh, example. Yes, we have DSView. It's just working that way that in that software we add particular console servers. Then based uh, of adding those console servers, we know what target devices are and we can assign some access to some devices based on a user, for example. Is it possible to integrate those solutions with other systems? Yes. Actually, I mentioned we have a RESTful API, so uh, we can uh, use web services uh, to get information from our solutions and, of course, to provide information back. So two-way communication. But also on our boxes, we provide a programming languages like Perl or Python. So if we want to create some scripts, which will do some information sharing, sending some information to outside uh, of our solution, definitely we can do that. Does Vertif ensure support only for Vertif PDUs? Uh, no, actually, we also provide the support for other solutions. So if we go, for example, for ports, and we go for that second port, which uh, has a PDU connected to it, if we go to a power, then we can see that we provide a support for different vendors, and that list will grow, definitely. So it will be a server, it is ServerTech, it's Raritan, it's APC, and it is Eton. And just to, to maybe explain this a little bit, it's not a support based on SNMP information, so or MIB files. It's just a support based on that, that we connect using serial to that PDU, and we know what commands we need to execute to get a particular information. So, for example, how many outlets are available, what is the status of that outlet, and how to control that outlet. So, we just know what commands we need to execute to do that. Those were all questions. If anything comes to your mind after the webcast, feel free to reach Krzysztof directly. You may find direct contact to Krzysztof in speaker, speaker via widget. Thank you very much for attendance. Hope to, hope to speak to you soon during future Verdi webcasts.